controversial topic for the electricians out there today. When undertaking an installation of a home EV charger, can you install additional equipment within the meter box enclosure? Well, this one is going to be interesting. We got called out on social media because we installed a current transformer and a passive device in the form of the Harvey within the meter box and got posed the question, Gordon, can we do that? Yeah, well, they were pretty, pretty categorical that you couldn't. Um, and we're going to unpack that during this video. But before we do that, Gary, let's just remind ourselves what we mean when it comes to a meter box enclosure. Okay, let's have a look at one of those then. Bring that in. So what have we got inside this box? Yeah, traditionally, there we go. We've got the cutout fuse. We've got a kilowatt hour meter and the appropriate tails. And that equipment will be owned by the DNO and or maybe the uh, metering company that installed that as well. So that's what we've got. Yeah, so the electrician is only responsible for yeah, the connect, bringing the tails in there and having them available to connect. Um, and we'll come on to who actually owns the meter box a little bit later. Um, but let's just cut to what we're seeing on social media when it comes to EV charger yeah. installations. Okay. We'll bring that one in. And uh, yeah, so what's been added to this box? Gary? Well, you notice we've got a 100 amp switch now. It wasn't in our first one, but you can also see a consumer unit there. So someone's thought it's easy to install the consumer unit there. The EV charging point is likely to be on the same wall and in very close proximity to this meter cabinet. And also you can piggyback into those tails, can't you? You can pick up that supply that's needed for that consumer unit in that location as well. Yeah, so what don't we have much of in that in that box? Uh, we don't have a lot of room, I would suggest, now that consumer unit's been installed. Yeah, and I think that's the concern here that, uh, yeah, all the room has been taken up by that additional installation and should that meter be changed in the future? Yeah. And, you know, who knows what this new smart world looks like that we're going into, there could be a possibility that additional equipment needs to be fitted in there by the DNO or the meter operator. And unfortunately, the space has already gone. Yeah. And uh, we've seen it a lot on social media as well. It's that if somebody else has done it and taken a photograph of it and left it on Instagram, Twitter, etc., or even produced a video, it becomes, well, we can obviously do that because such and such, such and such and such and such have done it. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah, you get sort of lulled into a false sense of security. So this is not a one off. Let's just cut to some other images that we okay. found out there. Let's bring that one in. Um, yeah. Again, similar situation. There's a small consumer unit being added. All the room has been taken. Up. Yeah, if the supply authorities come along, the DNOs come along and they want to change that meter for something else, there's not a lot of room it's been taken up. We can also talk about some other constraints as well around things like the temperature. Mm. Obviously, you've added some equipment in there and that might create a temperature that's different. Yeah, so with obviously at eFix, we like to help electricians out and bring some clarity uh, to the situation. So for your gain, uh, we threw ourselves at the mercy of the DNOs and asked the question, whether this situation is allowable, um, you know, has, you know, somehow has guidance changed or something else, and uh, we decided to uh, ask all of the DNOs. Right. Okay, separately. we did. Yeah, and it took a while to get some responses, but we did get some responses, and it got all the way up to the top, didn't it? Yes, it did. So, um, yeah, a few of, uh, DNOs responded directly to us, uh, particularly the ones who were very proactive yeah. in terms of when it comes to the EV situation, um, and the others bumped it up to the Energy Networks Association. Um, which is essentially the trade body for all of the uh, DNOs operating in the UK. Um, and yeah, they, their response will, will come to in a minute, um, but you'll probably recognize the ENA because yeah. they're the people who come up with the form that uh, basically the permission to connect for an EV charger uh, that has to go off when you install one anyway. So the answer from them would probably be the answer, won't it? Yes, so let's just cut to that. Let's, uh, let's, this is the official answer that we got back. So while the meter cabinet is the customer's, a bit of clarification for you there, it is a space designed for the use of the electricity industry apparatus only and no allowance is made for additional equipment. For safety reasons, we would not recommend that any internal wiring, including a consumer unit, is installed within the cabinet. Okay, wow, so the, the, we, I'll, I'll shorten that because I like a short answer, that's no. Yeah, I think that was that's quite a polite no. Um, Not all of them were polite though that we got back, were they? Uh, no, no, there was there was it's some of the DNOs who responded directly. In ones we have a, a, obviously a relationship with some other matters we've dealt with, including uh, looped supplies. Yeah. Uh, check that video out if you haven't yes, uh, seen one. that. Um, it was yes a no, and they did mention that that the meter box has been designed around the equipment they understand, which is meters and cutouts and temperature rise could be a potential issue that they are concerned about. One of the DNOs 
went a little bit further than that. So it wasn't uh, just a no and you're in breach of your electricity supply agreement, which would state that as part of them supplying you with electricity, you're responsible for maintaining an area to house the meter and associated equipment. So what's the worst case scenario? What could they do to us if we start installing stuff within their cabinet? Uh, well, they would want the... Um, uh, they would want that equipment removed from the cabinet. Okay. And if you don't remove it, Gary, what could happen then? They could actually take something out of your cabinet to free up a bit more space. That would be your cutout fuse, whether it be 60, 80 or 100 amps, could be removed from that location, therefore no supply to you. Yeah, so in the worst case scenario, yeah, you could lose your electricity supply. I'm saying that's probably quite an extreme measure, um, but they'd probably suggest that you got the electrician who installed that equipment in there to come back and remove it to an area that's uh, allowed for that equipment. So if we're talking about where we're allowed to do it, if I'm looking at a meter cabinet, I'm normally thinking consuming and it's probably the other side of the wall. We've done a video on how long your towels can be from that area into your consumer unit. So why are they actually going into the meter cabinet when we're actually that close possibly to the consumer unit? Yeah, again, we know that EV charge points are, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a, quite a competitive market. Yeah. So it's, a lot of the time it's down to cost and obviously ease, convenience for the customer, as we know in our video, we had to change the whole consume unit yeah, we did. To, to do our EV connection. Um, and obviously an easy way around that's to add an additional consume unit. But as again, we saw in that installation, the consume units in the hallway, customers probably don't want that disruption and another box in, in quite a prominent area of the house. Yeah, so it's driven by cost. We've done a video on how much does it cost to install an EV charger, and I recommend you check that one out. So we we probably removed the need to change the consumer like we did because we needed another fuseway. Putting a separate board in a hallway or a prominent area is a bit unsightly. So you sort of sneak it into the meter cabinet and shut the door. Nobody knows it's there, do yeah, you? Yeah, and again, you see a lot of these images on social media where you see the nice shiny EV charger installed and you see the cable neatly clipped along the wall and you say, where's that cable gone? Oh, it's just gone into the meter box. Yeah, and then we don't see the photographs of that area, do we? Yeah. So we'll probably see less of those photographs <laughs> after these, this video. It would, I would say it would be naive to continue doing that practice because EV is going to be rolled out. We know it's going to be massive. It's where we're going, whether we believe it or not. We're all going to end up having a battery powered car in our lifetime, so we're going to need to charge it. So let's get in front of this problem, I would suggest, with a yeah, solution. We have. So this is obviously is understood. Um, and here's, here's what we found some other images. Again, this is what other people are doing uh, on, uh, across on uh, social media. You can see what they added there underneath the there, Gary. Wow, we've now got a consuming it outside of the installation. For me, I'd probably want to be able to lock that. I wouldn't want uh, somebody to nip down the side of mine and turn my EV off. Yeah, it's one of those, it's a brave pill moment, isn't it? All of a sudden now we've got an EV charging point on the outside of the building and now we've introduced a consuming it. And predominantly that's because it's driven by cost, I would suggest. They would have suggested it's cheaper to do that than change the board as we've suggested earlier. But it does mean you've got another piece of real estate on the outside of your house. And I might be able to get away with it if it was on the side of my house. Would you be able to get away with it on the front of your property? Uh, no, that would be, I mean, I've got some more examples here. Uh, some other ones, uh, yeah, I mean, as, as, yeah, I'd have a challenging conversation if that was on the front of the house. It's not the most attractive. We love Zappy chargers, but then we've suddenly got all that conduit and we've got another small consumer unit there. Yeah, that, that would be a challenging, uh, challenging place to go. Obviously, the size of that consumer unit does very much depend upon the EV charger. Oh, of course it does, yeah. Because so we've got the technology for protective of pen faults and that's sometimes remote, and we... Yeah, Ooh, yeah, yeah, the Zappy's packed full, RCD, um, and yeah, the pen fault protection and, and, and other things. Um, Check so, out our video on yeah. when we installed one of those as well, because uh, again, fantastic. However, I'm looking at that one, and like you, I'm looking at it and thinking, I'll probably get away with that on the side of my property, that little bit of plastic conduit, the EV charger, because obviously my car's going to be there when I'm charging it up, probably screening it off, and when my car isn't there, I'm probably out in it, and I'm not looking at the side of the wall. But I see where you're coming from. Yeah, it starts yeah, becoming it's, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it depends. And some some uh, EV chargers are sold on the looks. We've looked at the Anderson yeah. charger before on the channel, which it comes with a selection of different wood finishes, Gary. <laughs> so unless uh, unless consumer unit manufacturers are going to come up with some matching wood finishes and things like that, there's uh, well, there's, a, there's a potential for a new product range there. Um, yeah, that, then will we see more of this? Will we see some more innovations in terms of uh, better looking enclosures for outdoor consumer units? Yeah, that's a, that's a big question and hopefully one that will develop over time. Mm. But we can just clarify again, we can't just because it 
doesn't look great on the outside, we can't slip it into that meter box. Mm. All the DNOs that we've contacted have said no, haven't they? Yes, and yeah, through the trade association as well, the ones who didn't get back to us directly. Um, but we can also clarify something else, Gary, in terms of who actually owns that meter box. Right, okay. When the door blows off, you know the little catch that comes down, there's a very small piece of fiberglass there, and if you end up just breaking that off, that'll thing will flap all day long, and you end up putting a bit of duct tape on it. And you'd like to think at that stage, the people that own the space maybe within there, and you'll clarify that for me in a minute, would come and replace that door and box for you. Is that right? No, so that yeah, so you do you do own the meter box. It passes to you once you've signed that uh, electricity supply agreement, um, but you are still responsible for maintaining enough space in there so that your supply can be uh, suitably maintained and upgraded if it needs to be. So I own the box, and they're allowed to use the space within it. Yeah, it's That's, not. It's not so lose lose there, there, it? there. So, <laughs> ah, so on that bombshell. Uh, would obviously love your comments on this situation. Uh, how are you installing EV chargers? And you know, especially when it comes to these uh, quick installs where you've got that hugely attractive meter box that you want to access, uh, what are you doing about this? Does what we've presented in this video cause you to uh, possibly change that way? Or have you got a great solution uh, to, yeah. to solve this problem? Bang those comments in below and we'll uh, hopefully get back to as many as we can.